Hey guys, how's it going? Jason Seychelles here. Welcome back to the channel. Today we are one week into the patch and I am here to present you nine different decks that I think are really cool, really saucy, some of the new additions to the meta, and I think are pretty cool decks to play out on ladder. Um, this patch we've seen like uh, so many changes, uh, buffs and nerfs across the table, big hits to decks like Yoron Arms, Tree, as well as uh, Mono Shrima, although Mono Shrima is still like a very good deck just based off of matchups alone, but we can cover that a little bit later into the video. I think one of the cool parts of the new meta is just how mid-range centric the meta is, and I think generally speaking as um, the meta is more mid-range dominated, we generally have better metas in my opinion. Control feels good, mid-range feels good, aggro feels good, um, just so many different archetypes feel really good when mid-range is very strong. And you know, with cards like Udyr, um, the Jace Lux changes, uh, Galio, Leona changes, things like that, that just introduces a lot of variety into the mid-range stuff, and I'm really excited to showcase some of the decks here for you guys. Um, so let's just kick things off, starting with Jace Lux. So Jace Lux has always been like a pretty decent deck throughout, but I think um, with the recent play versus cast change to the deck, it is one of the decks that does benefit the most from it because of the ability to get a guaranteed laser off of Lux once you cast a 6 mana spell. And with the additional lasers, or at least the guarantee of the lasers, you can now have a much stronger mid-range presence. Um, you are much better into Ionia slash Deny based decks, and you just uh, are able to push a lot more damage. This particular version of the deck, um, this is the one I took off of Dave Bow, our resident Jace Lux expert and one trick. It is just a very mid range tempo deck. You can think of it as similar to like what Silver Auction does, except his champions are just coming down a little bit later. Its power turns might be one or two turns later. We have this very aggressive, not, rather than aggressive, we have this very um, strong tempo y mid range power. We have Broadwing, we have Mage Secret Persuader that becomes a 4 3 challenger. Also a cool addition to the cast versus change. This also gets its plus one, plus one, and challenger on cast. So even if the six mana spell is denied, you are still able to grant Mage Seeker Persuader that additional buff. Um, some more tempo tools. We have cards like back-to-back -back as well as the four Demacias from the Vanguard Sergeant. is just providing a very powerful mid-range Demacia game plan with cards like Lux and Jace to supplement the late game value with Lux getting the lasers or Jace just doubling up on our spells or just having the acceleration gate to finish things off. Shock Blast of course also just provides a little bit more avenues of burn and then we have the classic PNZ removal tools as well as the Demacia buffs with the combat, combat spells as well. So just overall pretty well-rounded deck. A uh, pretty good mid-range deck as far as things go, and a very good benefiter of the recent change to the play versus cast. The second deck we have here is Talia Malphite. This is another big benefiter of, rather than the change to the play versus cast, but it is a big benefiter of the recent shift towards a more mid-range focused meta. Malphite just really dominates these mid-range metas because his units, in, or at least the units within the Malphite decks, are just a lot bigger, and Malphite's spell being able to stun an entire board of units is really powerful into a mid-range deck because they're just all unit-based, and you can develop a board wide of yourself, stun away your opponent's board, and then just kill them in a single turn. So the deck has a very powerful late game into pretty much any sort of mid-range deck out there in existence. Um, and it's just a matter of surviving the early game, which you have plenty of supplements from the Shreema side to do so. Endless Devout remaining one of the strongest three drops in the game, being able to be coupled with Ride of Arcane to kill an, your opponent's unit as well as generating a 5-3 of yourself. Um, and of course we have Quicksand to stall out the game, just a phenomenal combat trick that Mono Shreema, or sorry, Shreema has that has been buffed in the past. Also, two copies of Celestial Wonder One, the new cards, especially dominant in against mid-range decks that focus on, you know, two or three big units, being able to send two of those in one round, just very good. Chip, of course, coming in as a one mana 3-3. Three, three. You just can't really argue with that. Um, but again, the main goal here is just to really get off with 
Malphite, and the main combo we have there is Salt Spire into Talia, which also just gives you a 9-8 Rock Bear as well as a 5-4 Rock Bear. So very powerful tempo swing turns in the mid game, especially starting from turn 5 and 6, when you can really get that Talia down onto that Salt Spire. But we have some pretty decent early game blockers to supplement that with a bunch of Shrima tools like Quicksand and Unraveled Earth to challenge down our opponent's board. Overall, just an absolute mid-range crusher. Um, pretty good in tournaments as well. A um, little bit more vulnerable on ladder to things like burn and aggro, uh, as opposed to a few other mid-range decks, because this one does go a lot later than others. But overall, so a very cool deck. It's nice to see Malphite getting some love. Oh, I almost forgot. Malphite got a change. Stun an enemy? Malphite's insane. <laughs> That's all that really is to say. 7 mana, 7 11, stun an enemy. Defensively, absolute house. Feels so bad to develop into Malphites now. So, really huge change for the deck as well. Being able to stun on play is just phenomenal in doing exactly what Malphite wants to be doing. For the third deck, sticking with the strong mid range game plan, the strong mid range meta, we have another very similar deck. We have Yumi Pantheon. No surprise that Pantheon is another winner of this patch as we shift towards a more mid-range meta again. Um, we just have some of the best scaling units out there and can really just beat down on any smaller mid-range deck. Saga Seeker and Wounded White Flame just having Faded allows us to scale infinitely throughout the game as well as Pantheon and having the ability to attach with Yumi just gives us extra buffs throughout the game. An uh, interesting change to the faded keyword is now on cast and play again. So Sharp Sight will actually proc the faded before the spell resolves, giving you a plus one plus one buff even before the spell triggers, which is actually a pretty huge change in addition to um, conjunction with Concerted Strike, being able to get the buff from the faded before the spell resolves so that you have a slightly stronger single combat or a slightly stronger Concerted Strike really does make a difference um, here and there. But again, this this deck there shouldn't really be, need much say to this deck. Just a phenomenally strong mid range deck. Hand down coming down as an absolute house um, against a lot of different control decks. Just being able to roll spell shield and scout and elusive and things like that, and just overall be a general annoyance. Cataclysm, of course, a very phenomenal card as well. Just absolute push damage when we go really big with our units and attach a zenith blade to them. Suddenly Cataclysm is just dealing with 10 damage of its own, and we can really apply a lot of pressure and force down our opponent's health total. The fourth deck, Ziggs Talia, um, deck that I think a lot of people sort of maybe just aren't really aware of, but a really strong mid-range deck featuring a lot of the powerful mid-range Shrima tools. Uh, has a really high win rate on ladder as of recent, which is really cool to see. Um, the reason why it's so good is not only because it has the classic Endless Devout Desert Naturalist combos, which can just really flood the board with a lot of tempo, but it also has some very good protection tools for its champions, such as cards like Ancient Hourglass, as well as Rite of Negation. Ancient Hourglass especially has additional synergy within this deck because of leveled Ziggs being able to deal damage to the Nexus when a landmark ticks down, as well as being able to combo off with Talia if you can Hourglass Talia on a champion or even another Talia that's often game winning of its own. Um, the ability to just threaten open attacks with level champions in conjunction with either Absolver or having Overwhelm off of Herald of Magus just makes the deck an absolute threat into decks that really can't punish at fast speed. Um, and for the other mid-range decks, we do have Hexplosive Minefield, which is one of the strongest development punishers, I think, in the game, being able to burst stun at slow speed. <laughs> that's, a, that's a little bit of a, a little bit of a, what's that word called? It's a little bit of a, um, it's the thing that's an opposite of the, oh god, English. You, you guys got what I'm saying. Um, but has super strong finishers with Arsenal, has super strong finishers with Harold Magus and Absolver just being able to grant our champions overwhelm at burst speed, especially when Talia and Ziggs are able to weaken the opponent's blocker, just gets in there for a lot more damage. We have the burn with leveled Ziggs, we have the Arsenal for the end game goals, and we have some burn from Talia as well. So actually a very powerful deck. Um, once you stabilize, again, a little bit weaker into aggro and burn strategies, but overall a very strong mid-range deck.
And the last one to cap it off here is Draven Scion. With the recent Scion change to 9 attack, this one does see a little bit slight more of a change. But what is really powerful about Draven Scion as a whole is it just a very good well-rounded deck. Against a lot of mid-range decks, Scion just absolutely stomps the matchup, being able to provide a unit that can block extremely well, but also apply a lot of pressure and your opponent feels really bad about needing to deal with Scion because then you get to rally of your own. In addition to just uh, Scion just providing absolute truck, I think this deck is one of the strongest decks against a lot of other traditional mid-range decks because we do have um, some really fantastic cards from Noxus, such as survival skills being able to just get a value trade off of a big unit is very powerful. Whirling Death when our deck is just filled with big statted units, and of course we can get additional Whirling Deaths off of our Draven as well. Flock, Sentry, just uh, Boom Baboon also giving you the Flame Chompers to drag big mid-range units aside. We can play toe-to-toe -to -toe with mid-range or we can just go wide around it and then burn them down. It just provides us a very flexible game plan into a lot of different matchups. Into aggro, we just have the same wide game plan. We have the control tools like Mystic Shot and Get Excited. And even into control decks, Scion absolutely crushes Lost Soul Infinite Value. This is super strong and super um, well-rounded deck overall that I think is a phenomenal deck to showcase as the patch progresses. Now, we've talked a lot about the meta, how there's a lot of mid-range, and I just showcased five different mid-range decks for you guys to see, so I think it's no surprise that Trundle Trindamir Field Rush is one of, is the most played and has one of the highest win rate decks in the met current meta, and that's simply because of its overwhelming control abilities, as well as a really powerful way to end the game. A lot of mid-range decks just fail to deal with three vengeances and two, two ruinations uh, piled with freezes of its own. It becomes a very powerful deck in punishing open development, in punishing open attacks. There's just really not too many good ways in uh, actually trying to dance around some of the removal options and interactions that Feel the Rush has. Um, and it has just a bunch of different tools. Now, the newer versions of Fuel Rush are experimenting with this little bit more of a ramp game plan. You have cards like Faces of the Old Ones that allows you to ramp a little bit harder, and we kind of top off with both It That Stairs as well as She Who Wanders to provide an additional board control as well as an alternate way of winning the game by obliterating our opponent's units in hand. Of course, classically, Trundle and Trinmere just provide great overwhelm units to close the game in a conjunction with either Atrocity or just pulling them out of the deck with Feel the Rush to just get really big statted units. So that just provides an overwhelming amount of pressure, and the ramp can just get us there a little bit earlier. Again, with the classic control tools, Aggro just completely folds to us, and a lot of traditional mid-range decks, again, just don't really have the means of dealing with so much hard removal. There's a lot of decks out there that do have denies, so something to be aware of ancient hourglass as well so the talia zigs the malphite talia will give field rush a little bit of run for its money but card of decks like pantheon decks like jace lux ezreal draven those will definitely fold into the field rush category another deck that i do want to showcase within the control archetype is a jace heimer deck this one is featuring the shadow owls conjunction with the piltover and zon um, just showcasing a little bit of the Heimer change. Heimer being really cool in generating turrets on play. So even if your Heimer is targeted and dies, you still get the value from the turrets. In conjunction with the six mana spells, you do get a six one elusive turret that can be buffed by cards like Hextech Handler as well as a level two Heimer and provides your very powerful control deck with also very powerful ways of rolling the game to the finish line. I think for how deceptively controlled this deck is, with cards like Triple Vengeance, Ruination, Double Shock Blast, and a Piercing Darkness, Heimerdinger provides a phenomenal way of converting that control into tempo with the turrets, and I think your opponent can often be surprised by how wide you're able to go and generate with how many turrets you can get. Adaptatron 3000, probably one of the most underrated one-drops in the game, allows this game plan to thrive even more because... 1-3 uh, for 1 is already seemingly hard to remove, and then you can attach keywords like tough, um, fearsome, you know, barrier to it, and then it just becomes a whole lot harder to kill outside of combat or some sort of hard removal. 
And if Adaptatron 3006 throughout the game with a Heimerding on board, you can now suddenly spread your keywords to all of your mechs. So whether it be elusive, whether it be fearsome, whether it be overwhelm, suddenly your small dingy turrets that are generally just good blockers suddenly are able to turn the pressure back onto the opponent and just have a bunch of keywords that your opponent really can't deal with very easily. If you do have a wide board as well, when you have a level Jace on the board, you can then just play Acceleration Gate and suddenly you have a very powerful board that can threaten to kill your opponent in one turn. Not to mention that whatever 6 mana spell you play also generates a 6-1 elusive turret with Heimer. So while it does have a very powerful control game plan, don't be fooled by how quickly it can turn things around and just beat down your opponent with some turrets. So I thought this would be a really cool deck to showcase. It's one of my personal favorite decks. I love Heimer Merdinger as a whole, and it's good to see that this deck is doing pretty okay as well. Finally, we move into some of the more interesting decks. I have two cool decks I want to showcase for you guys that I think are very powerful, not necessarily because of the power level of the deck, but because they have very cool mid or very cool matchup tables into what I would consider mid-range decks as well as control decks. So the first one is Kennen Ezreal, and for the same sort of arc, we have Ari Kennen, although I haven't really played any Ari Kennen, but I would presume it to actually be pretty good right now as well. But into a lot of these unit-based mid-range decks, we have just way too flexible uh, protection tools, recall and retreat, just out efficient efficiency, efit out out efficiency your opponent does that make sense whatever um when our opponent plays any sort of removal spell our spells are just going to be way more efficient than our opponents and we can just gain a lot of advantage actually out of just protecting our units with recalls and retreats but in while we're doing that we're actually advancing our own game plan as well which can be very powerful cards like concussive palm and homecoming also just phenomenal cards against a lot of these big mid-range game plans in like a malphite it just gets homecoming and then suddenly your opponent's down six unit mana can just be a very good way of just completely shutting down attacks all by itself not to mention the fact that cannon can just stun your opponent's unit for free as well it's just a really good way of annoying any sort of unit based mid-range deck as well this deck is very, very focused on Kennen because it is the main way of leveling Ezreal as well, and it's the main way of activating most of most of your deck. So finding Kennen or finding Kinku Wayfinder as soon as you can is crucial for this deck to succeed. But once you have that, your game plan just is more efficient than any other deck, and as long as you are well versed in this sort of deck or in the Ari Kennen deck, then you have a very easy time in piloting this. If you did play a lot of it the other season so for those returning players this can be a very good comfort pick and is actually very powerful because it does beat field rush because of the denies and it does beat a lot of mid-range decks because of the efficient spells and another deck that i do does do fit do think fits into this category of beating mid-range and beating control is this viego mono viego shrima deck this has been seeing play since before the patch, but I think after the patch, it just makes a whole lot more sense as well. Viego is one of those champions that is able to outscale pretty much any sort of mid-range deck out there, because once you get to the late game, suddenly you have like 10-10 encroaching mists, suddenly you have like a 18 power Viego, and then your Viego is like removing your opponent's board as well, and it can just be a very powerful way of steamrolling the game and just gaining a tempo from there. Because we are in Shrima, we get to run broken cards like Hourglass and Ride of Negation and Quicksand. So we have a lot of ways of both protecting our Viego while also just stalling the game out until we get to our late game engines going with cards like Hydrovine as well as Viego. Having the additional ability to be in Shadow Isles means that we can actually run hard removal as well. So we have copies of Vengeance in the deck as well. So being able to stop any sort of hard removal, being able to stop any sort of power swings, any sort of power spells, and having the ability to control the board and outscale any other mid-range deck makes Viego actually a really, really strong deck within the current meta, and I think the meta reflect or the stats reflects it a little bit. So this is gonna be the last deck. Um there's there's actually a ton more decks that I think are very powerful and or rather can be played within the current meta. This is just a small glimpse of nine decks that I think are phenomenal and pretty cool decks to play. If you guys do want to check out some more decks, um, I would highly recommend either going to the Master Entire website to see the different decks as well as the guides written on these decks, 
or going to rentera.ar slash meta page where you can see all the decks, their win rates, and their play rates. I'll link both of those links down below in the description, as well as all the deck lists that you have seen here today. So be, feel free to check them out, or feel free to check out any of the ten, nine decks that I have showcased for you guys here. But uh, hopefully this gives you a little bit more creativity or motivation to try out some of these cool new decks. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. So I'll catch, I'll stop there for now, and I'll catch you guys tomorrow for another one. So peace out, guys, and take care.